Hello friends and thank you so much for clicking on my video today. Um, welcome if you're new, um, my name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they them and welcome back if you're back. I'm so happy you're here either way. Um, so I'm so excited, this is like my first time filming in the new craft room I think um, that I'm gonna upload on the channel so it's really cool. Um, so today is a video that I honestly have been thinking about making since the summer and it just got pushed back with moving and whatnot and it is the transformation of this um, leather jacket. I mean, it's like faux leather, but like this thrifted leather jacket into like a battle jacket or like a punk jacket or like whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm super, super excited to do it because I do have, um, I'll just show you guys really quick. This is my old like quote unquote battle jacket. Um, but it's kind of more from my hippie phase where I was wearing a lot of like greens and olive tones and earth tones and I just never wear it anymore and I realized it's because I don't really wear that color scheme anymore and I feel way more comfy in like a leathery and like, I don't know, I'm thinking of putting like spooky patches on it and stuff and I just have like a whole box of stuff that I'm excited to use. I like put it together this morning. Um, so this is like my box of things that I'm super excited for. I don't know exactly what I'll use and I put together this sketch of like kind of a basic idea of what I want to do but I'm really excited to get into that um, so this will be like kind of a tutorial but obviously feel free to if you're making your own jacket like take all the creative liberties you want and like don't feel like you have to make it look like a specific way or anything like these kind of jackets are all about putting your own spin on it and making your own kind of like creativity like shine through that sounds so cheesy but you know what I mean um, so I'm really excited to show you guys that also before I do that I want to show you really quickly the shirt that I made um, recently that I'm really proud of I'll link the tutorial that I used um, to make it, but essentially it's a shirt made out of socks. Heck yeah. Um, so these are all like old socks that for some reason or another were like uncomfortable or too tight or too worn out or whatever. Um, so I didn't turn like the foot part into the shirt, but I put, I turned like the ankle, like the tube sock part of them into the shirt. So if you think that's gross, that's fine. No one's forcing you to wear one, but um, I think it's really cool and I like how it looks. And I don't know, maybe I'll make another one when more of my socks get kind of not wearable or um yeah anyway regardless of that <laughs> um let's get on into the diy okay so step one is to make any patches that you're gonna make um this footage is kind of old because a lot of the patches i uh, used on the jacket are leftovers from the last time i made patches for an outfit um i'm using just white acrylic paint on um ripped up black denim squares from my boyfriend's old jeans and i find that like the best way to make patches is to use like very small um, brush strokes and to go over the paint multiple times in order to get like the right uh, thickness. If you're trying to copy like a band logo or something like that, look at the relative size of um, the lettering while you're doing it um, to make sure that it looks accurate. And you can also do the patch in chalk before you paint it so that you can like fix any mistakes i'm also just adding like little stars and tiny details to make my patches more interesting same here i'm just adding like a little border to this patch you could do like a straight line border or like a dotted line like this one you could make shapes around your patch whatever you want to do let your creativity run wild you can uh, look up inspiration for patches and jackets but just by looking on google or pinterest or whatever your favorite social media or you know whatever it is and and look for inspiration and obviously try not to like copy anyone's thing outright but like if you want to draw inspiration from different people's um pieces of art i feel like that's definitely a-okay and i'm just making a couple more patches you know gotta get the vegan heart in there the this and that I find it super easy to add just like little points of visual interest without like that much skill honestly like if you want to just add like some little lines and some little like cross shaped stars and sparkles I feel like that's super easy and just adds like that extra little piece of detail that makes it really unique. Um, feel free to add your creativity in whatever way big or small that you want to to your creations um, and you can see here all of my patches together. Um, obviously these all did not end up on the jacket. A lot of these ended up on my previous projects and I will link the videos where I show those. All right, so you totally don't have to start with a sketch if you don't want to. Lots of times I'll do a sketch, but um, the the way it ends up in, in the final product is very different than like how I imagined it. And that's totally fine. Um, but what I would recommend for sure is kind of trying to map out if you're putting on any patches where you want to put those um, before you start sewing them down. 
because very annoying to sew on like leather and stuff. So if you're doing it, you might as well do it once and not have to do it again. I have all these like little fun bits and bobs that I wanna add somewhere, but I'm not sure exactly where yet. But those might come after like the bare bones of like the patches are laid. These are kind of like leftovers from when I was making my kind of like punk dress. But they are all just like made from recycled um, denim, like my boyfriend's old jeans with acrylic paint. Um, I'm not super worried about them chipping and stuff because I tend not to wash jackets and stuff like that. Uh, but if you are worried about that kind of thing and are going to be putting a lot of effort into your patches and you really want them to stay good, um, then totally invest in some leather paint or fabric paint or, you know, like some sort of paint that is specific to the material that you are wanting to work on. I think it'd be cool to use some bones and I'm going to be painting spider webs inside these parts. I have this, I'm not sure if I wanna use it or planning to put, okay, I got all these cryptozoology patches um, from Maiden Voyage Clothing. I love them, they're super cool. And they're all iron on, but I'm totally just gonna sew them on, but I wanna put them down the sleeve. I think I could probably fit three. And maybe this will go on the back. I plan to like paint like a big back patch, I'm thinking. My only thing that I'm not sure about is I don't know if I want to like line any of these patches with some fabric. I think that could look fun instead of just having it like black and white. That would like add like a little colorful element to it. A little more dimension. Okay, yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna pull out my sewing machine and we're gonna get that started. Before I do that though, I just am going to make sure to take a picture of this so I can put the patches back how I liked them originally the first time when I redo them. Could I put that in there? <gasps> that would be cute. I really, uh, I found this little, I don't know, I think it's like a little bag, but I found it at the thrift store a while ago and it's like this little satin cute thing and I thought I would use it for something with dolls, but I think it would look so cute on the jacket. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's do it. So to start, I'm combining this um, Halloween ribbon that I found at the dollar store like a year ago, I think, with my they them patch. So I'm just gonna like attach it there. I'm out of black thread, so I'm just gonna use purple and that'll have to be that. So I'm just using my trusty rusty sewing machine to attach all the patches. And obviously you could do this by hand, but it would just take like a lot longer. Next, I've paired my ramshackle glory patch with just like a piece of plaid from the thrift stores. It ended up being a smidge large when I tried it back on, so I decided to hem the edges. So I'm just gonna sew that on and it'll make it not fray, so I guess bonus. And next up, you can see my trans rights patch, days and days patch. And I've just like lately loving this fabric that I got recently um, from Fabricland with like the little black cats on their witch hat and they're so stinking cute. I'm just gonna make a patch of just them because who can resist? And here's the tiny little purple cat patch. I love it. I think it just looks so, so precious. Decided I wanted my like little vegan heart to have like little bat wings with this fabric. I thought that would be super cute. So I cut it out so it didn't have its little glowy lines coming out of it. And it was like a little bit smaller and um, yeah, I, th I think it'll look cute. Here's my vegan heart. I love how the bat wings look on it. It just feels like a little va vampiric and kind of fun. And then it's time to just use my machine to attach all the patches once I've like put them in proper place and pinned them on. Um, I'm just using it to, you know, make a square around all the square patches and ensure that everything is nice and secured. Obviously, if you're doing this, be very, very careful not to sew over any zippers. Be careful that you are not... Um, sewing any pockets shut. I'll go into a little bit how I avoid that in a moment. But yeah, you always want to be extremely cautious if you're sewing with a machine that you are not going to like break your needles on a zipper. And if you are sewing um, by hand, ensure that you are not going to sew your jacket to your pants or whatever surface you're sewing on because oh my god, I've done that so many times and it's so annoying to have to rip out your hard work. So here I am just cutting um, the lining of the jacket in so I can pull the pocket out and um, not sew over it, but still use my sewing machine. I found this worked out pretty well, and when I was done, I just sewed the lining back in place. Here I am attaching that little lacy doily. Gosh, it was a really hard shape to do, but I'm really happy with it. And there was this tiny, tiny little patch that I found that was of a little red heart, but it was so itty bitty that I absolutely could not use my machine on it. So I did end up sewing this guy by hand. So I have this bracelet um, that came in a set that was from the dollar store and I'm gonna try to attach it here. I'm just gonna cut it to size. And I got some embroidery thread. 
And I'm just doing this because I don't want to break my needle with the massive skulls on this thing. So for my armbands on my jacket, I, they were kind of small, so I decided to put them all on bigger pieces of fabric so you know it takes up a little more space and um yeah i'm just gonna sew those together and then probably i'm gonna have to sew them by hand on the sleeve which is so annoying but i will get through it i honestly am so impressed by how quickly the sewing machine works like oh my god it's so much easier to sew with a machine than with you just by hand anyway these will oh my god these are so cool i really encourage you guys to check out these guys made in voyage clothing they're super fun and um yeah, excited to put these patches together and then on my jacket. So I've pinned all these on and I tried on the jacket and I liked how it looked. So this is the position I'm going with. I'm just going to sew around and I'm actually really happy that I attached these because these are way thinner than these. So it's going to be way easier to sew this um, to the material than it would be the like kind of thicker patches. So here I am just going ahead and hand stitching all my sleeve patches on. And next, it's time to make a back patch, so I'm using what is left of my boyfriend's poor old pants um, to cut out like a big old square that I can use as the back patch. And then I grab the jacket, make sure to measure up um, kind of how big the patch is so I can cut it to size, cut off any excess trim, and just to make it like extra clean and like a smidge smaller, I decided to also hem it. Um, so here I am just going in with some purple thread. I spent forever yesterday looking for a piece of chalk and I finally found it. Very happy about that. Um, so I'm just going to do like a rough outline of the design I want to do with the chalk. And the reason I like to do that is because chalk washes out really easily. And I find it's just useful, especially if you're doing lettering, um, to make sure that you space it out correctly. I'm going to do some hearts. I don't have a super clear plan, but I'll make it spooky. Spiderwebs. Might do some glow in the dark paint on this guy. And let's put a planet. Ooh, and some moon phases would be good. Triple goddess symbol. Well, alien. Maybe I'll do a cat here instead. Okay. Something like that. Okay. So now I'm just going to clean up this design. Used my paint on it, so we'll see how that goes. So as you can see, I changed a couple elements and just, um, you know, fixed it up and there's still a couple more changes that are to come before I finish painting, but it's fine. Um, I'm going in with my acrylic paint. It's the exact same thing as when I was making the patches in the beginning for the rest of the jacket. Um, really small brush strokes. Using a really small paintbrush is very handy in my experience, unless you're like doing the big like filling in. Uh, but I like to make like very detailed kind of cluttered small art pieces art pieces on my um patches and stuff if you want to do like a big bold kind of design then you'd probably not want to use small brushes as it would be super super tedious but i'm just going ahead and doing my rough design you can see it coming together i wanted it to be like very magical and spooky and i put a little portrait of tuna i ended up not just doing like a regular cat but i did like a little tuna because she's my absolute angel i love her so so much and i thought she should be honored on my back patch so that's who it is um that i am painting in right now my sweet looney tunes and as always i'm just going ahead and adding lots of little details of like stars and sparkles and just like little dots to make it look extra like ethereal <laughs> to make it look extra ethereal and magical and stuff i think it's just like a really nice little touch and I'm doing a really small lettering that just says queer power and then to make the design pop a little bit more once I had like the kind of line work in I wanted to fill in a couple of the shapes with like white paint and just kind of like make things a little bit bolder and starker but you could also do this if you used colored paint um, in an easier way adding some little stripes and just random patterns to things extra little like hearts to the ghosts and hearts all around and little sparkles all around and once I'm pretty happy with it, I'm getting my um, glow-in-the-dark paint from the dollar store that's like the goopiest, grossest thing in the world. But it worked out pretty good. It dried clear, and I'm just doing a thick layer of it, or not a thick layer. I'm doing multiple thin layers on basically all of the cartoon elements and all the just the little doodles um, on my jacket. And when... Um, it's in the dark you can see basically everywhere where the white paint and the glow in the dark paint is um but not really where the black paint is 
it's a little bit hard to see but i think you can see it for a second like glowing in um the camera lens when i turn the light off in there i love it it's super cool in person um but over the film it's a little less visible but yeah super cool basically i just um did the paint all over all the white spots um, or all the design sort of and it just makes everything really beautiful and glowing i think it looks super super cool sorry if you guys can't see it very well but i'm very very happy with it and it's, it's really cool in person so it took a couple of hours <laughs> or a day or so for all my layers to dry and like obviously i had to wait between layers but when it's finally done i'm just attaching the back patch with my sewing machine make sure to pin it in place first so you don't um sew it on crooked but i'm super super happy with how it looks and then i'm taking a pair of pantyhose that i got from the thrift store and they're white and i am uh, cutting both legs off and then I'm cutting the toes off each respective leg and this is like a way to make um, shirts or armbands or arm warmers if you're making a shirt just leave the um, hips on and just cut a, a neck hole out of the crotch and then I'm using multiple scissors to make just random holes all over um, the pantyhose these ones I wish they kind of were the more stringy kind but I got like a pair from the thrift store that was super old so they kind of didn't have that kind of stringy quality which I was hoping for but it's fine I'm still happy with how it turned out. I'm using all my different scissors and like seam rippers and different things to uh, make lots and lots of holes of all different sizes and shapes and just making it messy and stuff. And I repeat that on the other leg as well and then roll it up onto the sleeve. And as you can see, it kind of gives it like a weird holy look, but then with another one on top, it gives it kind of like a webbed spidery look or like a bandage look or like a zombie. I don't know. Like it's a, it's a cool, fun thing. Okay. And this, I don't know why I filmed this because it didn't end up working, but I didn't film up what ended up working. I glued it in place first because the, um, um so the person that I got inspo from to do this was this girl named Amy who wrote this blog called The Ultimate Goth Guide on the internet. And I loved it so much and I still love it so much. And honestly, this, um, whole tutorial was inspired by her so thanks Amy I love you I hope you're doing well wherever you are um but yes so on the sleeve goes and once it's on I safety pin it all in place but this didn't end up really working for me because I used fabric glue instead of leather glue and I ended up um sewing the sleeve on as well as um having the glue on there the next step in the project is to just attach my little studs to um a bunch of different spots on the jacket I'm starting with the shoulders and I'm poking a hole into the leather um, with some little scissors and then I'm screwing in the bottom and attaching the top and then using a screwdriver to really secure all my studs and spikes in there. I will link some um, stores below where you can buy studs and spikes um, for like affordable prices. Um, but yeah, I'm just attaching them all around um, the shoulders on both shoulders. And once that's done, I decided I also wanted them on the collar, but to add a little extra to the collar, I um, use some of my leftover um, cheetah print ribbon to just add a little stripe to the collar of like cheetah or leopard print or whatever this is i know there's a difference i just i regardless i am just sewing on that stripe and then i am poking some holes to put the little spikes all across the base of the collar but yeah that's what it looks like all together how cute i freaking love the look of spikes especially with cheetah and um they're really fun to just like run your fingers over when you're bored all right all right, so next I wanted to make like a little lacy edge for the jacket. So I'm using a really loose stitch and running my um, sewing machine along the top of this piece of lace ribbon that I got from uh, the dollar store or the thrift store. I don't really remember. Uh, but the point of this is to just like have as loose of a stitch as possible so that it's really easy to pull one of the threads and make it um, kind of a ruffle shape. So that's what I'm doing here. And um, it's easier to do this with hand sewing, but it's way faster to do it with um, machine sewing so once it's all done I am just taking one of the threads and pulling it and working that ruffle all down um, the the line of lace I guess you could say um, and I'm consistently measuring it against the jacket to make sure that um, it'll be this correct length and not too long and not too short one thing that i would recommend that i forgot to do is check if your jacket overlaps because mine does and i didn't have to put as much lace as i wanted to i could have done like a heavier ruffle but once it's um the right size i am just pinning it all in place um so that i can sew it on with my machine what you're going to want to be very careful again is do not sew over any zipper i put like a little x with some pins to make sure that I didn't sew over the zipper here but um yeah you want to be careful that you're not breaking your needle on any of the hardware on your jacket that's why I put on all my patches and stuff before I attach any chains or studs or like things like that or I usually try to but sometimes ideas strike me too late uh, but here I am just sewing um the 
lacy um, trim to the bottom of the jacket and it gives it just kind of like a cute little look. Then um, I wanted to make these like spiderweb lapels so I'm taking some white acrylic paint and my tiny paintbrush and just drawing a couple of lines down the lapel. I've always seen people do this with jackets and I think it looks so cool. Um, I love the motif of spiderwebs. Spiders are really cool so you know why not add it in here. Once I have like my lines of where the webs should go I can start adding in the little divots and I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly but basically just adding like the little U shapes um, between to connect all the spider webs. This was really fun and very easy but the paint did end up chipping and I am um, had to do a layer of Mod Podge, but I will go into that later and um, show the results. And I just go ahead and repeat the exact same thing on the other lapel, so we have two matching spiderweb lapels. Uh Alright, so I decided to add a couple of extra patches to the back. Um, they're kind of from like old clothes. So the first one, I love this so much. Um, my boyfriend made me this kind of in our first year of dating, I think, and it's supposed to say feeling home, but he didn't realize he misspelled it until like after he gave it to me, and it says feeing home, but it has a little B on it, and I love it, so I'm really happy to have it like kind of in the center of the back of my jacket. Then I decided I might as well add that little rose on. So these are all just pinned in place. I'm gonna sew them on after I show you guys. Um, this is super cool. I used to have it on a tank top, but the tank top got super threadbare and I couldn't really wear it anymore. But it's like this screen printed um, on canvas patch of like kind of a cool monster. Um, I got it like years ago at this little fair and it was just like from this really cool dude that like made his own patches so I put this one on here and as well as this one which was on a flannel that I just don't wear very much anymore and I love this patch so so much it has this kind of zebra character wearing a gas mask uh, holding like a butterfly net and they're riding on like some kind of weird bird like a vulture or a dodo bird or something and just so cool, so beautiful, so creative. I really, really like the patches. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew those on. And then it's probably time to like attach all the chains and little bits and bobs and accessories and stuff. So let's get on with it. So um, all the patches have been attached to the back. I am super happy with how it's looking. Um, the white paint though is chipping a lot so I have a feeling I'm gonna have to like seal it with like some Mod Podge or something um, or maybe just cave and buy leather paint which uh, uh, but for now it's time to add on little random bits and bobs so first I'm taking a really big needle with some embroidery thread and I've doubled it over and I've got these like little plastic bones from the dollar store from Halloween and I'm just gonna like sew them around um, this patch. We'll see if we want to do more than one, but for now we'll just start with this one. I remember a while ago I had like this phase where I was watching a lot of those like, <laughs> you know those really bad makeover shows from like the early 2000s? I like hate those so much, but I used to watch them a lot for some reason, mostly because I would get inspo from like the before pictures of like all the really cool like alternative people they'd have on there. And like honestly my dream would be to have one of those makeover shows, but instead of making the people like look all normal and acceptable, like have them really go hard and like achieve all their like wildest alternative dreams and like you know if that was like the premise of the show oh my god I would still be watching those so much um but the point why I'm bringing that up is I remember I was watching one I think it was the one with pod um snot oh was it snog Mary avoid like that show it was on Netflix for a while it was horrible um there was like a really rude British robot that would like tell people that they weren't like hot enough and then they'd, they'd Tone them down in the most boring ways. It was it was very annoying. Um, but regardless, there was one contestant on there that was using chicken bones that like they had eaten like some like fried chicken for lunch or whatever. And then like that night they like made a jabot with chicken bones on it. And I was like, dude, that's so freaking cool. So I've always been really liking um, the aesthetics of like bones on clothing, but being vegan, sometimes it's hard to find bones from like an ethical source, especially when you don't live like near the forest very much anymore because when I lived back there, there was like tons of times that you could just like find animal bones like naturally, which was pretty cool, like around the, around the forest, around my house, which was always super fun. But a while ago, I got to like trade all these possum bones and stuff, like really small rodent bones um, for some quartz crystals. Like I 
supplied the quartz crystals and I received the bones and it was so freaking cool and I still have all of them and I haven't done anything crazy with them yet I don't think like I still have a lot of them left over and I was wanting to make some earrings or something out of them so I think that will be very fun and like a good use for them but in the meantime plastic bones on the jacket to give that little edge in a vegan way and then also I won't be as disappointed if they break or like if they snap or something because it's like I could just replace it very easily. Okay, so the first one's on and then I'll probably attach one down here. Next, I'm adding this little pink Ouija um, kind of planchette and board combination charm um, to my little lacy heart. Very hard to poke through. Okay, whatever. Just poke a little lower. Yeah, I really like these um, resin charms. I My boyfriend is into resin and like has made a couple pieces and I just like haven't ever had the patience, but it would be really cool because I have also like purchased some resin charms from also like some small businesses. Um, and I, I, always, I, I really like it and I think there's like so much potential for creativity, but ugh, I have enough creative endeavors <laughs> that, oh my gosh. But then again, what's another one? Hey, hard to poke through this fabric for some reason. I don't understand. It's like lacy satin. Why is it giving me such trouble? There we go. But yeah, the pack that I got came with like a bunch of these Ouija board charms. I think like three of each color in like pink, black, white. Pink, black, and white. And I've so far made some earrings out of the black ones and the pink ones for myself and out of the white ones for my friend Aiko, that is also my coworker. But yeah, I obviously have extras. So get to add one to the jacket and then I could always like wear my earrings with this jacket and be all like matchy matchy. That could be a cute look for sure. All right, so next step is to just add like little bits of metal, pieces um, of chain, safety pin, that kind of thing. Um, so I always save like when I have like keychains or like little metal things like that that fall apart, I tend to save the pieces because I'm weird about throwing things out and I usually find a use for them, like in making little clothes or like doll accessories or things like that. So for instance, here I have like this kind of little hooky guy. I have another one that I'm attaching to the other side. But I've always just had like a lot of random little like metallic pieces that tend to come in handy. So if you don't already collect like little metal junk and you wanna put little metal junk on your clothes, then I would highly recommend to start looking around. Once you start looking for it, you'll find so much of it and you'll be like, wow, it's everywhere. And then when people know that you like like little shiny things like that, they tend to save them for you. Like I have so many friends that are like, oh, like I had this shiny string and I was gonna throw it out, but then I was like, oh, like rabbit bite like that, you know, like that kind of thing. So thank you to my friends who do that for me. You are the sweetest ever. And like, yeah, if you, if you like little metal bits and bobs and sometimes people who like don't because lots of people don't like to waste but they don't have an idea of what to do with it and sometimes you don't have an idea of what to do with it until the occasion arises where you're like oh like I'm making this jacket or I'm making this thing or whatever and and it's like this is the perfect thing for it and um since my camera died while I was waiting for it to charge I added another layer of white paint and also like a thin layer of Mod Podge to seal in my spiderweb lapels We'll see how it goes. I might do another layer of paint and another layer of Mod Podge if needed. Um, I was looking online and people were, were recommending to either just use like fabric um, mediums or paints for vinyls, especially because this isn't real leather, it's like faux leather. So um, I don't know if like regular leather paint would work on it, but it's fine, whatever. So I'm attaching the other guy on. And then I'm gonna string a chain between these two guys and maybe do something similar on the other side or on the sleeve or something. Also, if you don't have metal bits and bobs, uh, safety pins are a really great alternative to use because you can get them at the dollar store, like a big pack of them for very cheap. And they're very useful for adding like a little edge and DIY customization to your clothing. But you can make your your alternative jackets as complex or as simple as you want. There's truly no rules. You can literally write or draw whatever you want on your patches. You don't have to do patches at all. You can just rip it up. You can just put spikes on it. You can literally whatever is the way that you want to do it. That's the right way for you to do it. You know what I mean? I also found this old like pocket watch kind of necklace that I never wear. So I might use it as like the chain 
to string between these two guys. Yeah, that works. Kind of want to add some more chain to it though. When I was a kid, my brother was really into um, Warhammer and he had all these Warhammer chains and then he gave them all to me. So I <laughs> have all these like tiny chains and they're very, very cool. I like them a lot. So here I am just using some very thin wire and some pliers to make sure that I can attach my chain to my little doodads. I basically couldn't find a jump ring that would fit both of them, so I am just using um, a, little, a little piece of wire and that worked really well, except I poked myself and my finger is bleeding, so I'm sorry if that bothers you. Then I'm adding this chain that I got from the thrift store and I'm just kind of like doubling it up and then kind of making the length a little bit so like there's four different sort of lengths and I'm gonna put it on the kind of side and then sew it on with thread. I'll probably use some safety pins to hold it in place once I get the um, right length. All right, looks good. And here you can see me just sewing on the chain with some embroidery thread. It was a little difficult to get it to stick properly and to be the correct length, but I managed to make it work and I'm really happy with how the chain looks, even though it makes the jacket kind of heavy, but it's fine. So I've just sewn on a couple of these guys and I'm just gonna attach the last one. They're all just like old recycled metal bits to kind of put them in order from like smaller to larger. I think it just looks really cool. So I switched out some of the chains a little bit. I just put like a little bit of a smaller chain up here and I'm feeling pretty happy with it. So now I've gotten, I've collected a bunch of different pins and I'm just gonna lay them out and stick them on and I think we'll be done. Starting with my cauldron pin. And for pins that have like a spike like this, I like to use a little plastic earring backing to just stick it on so that way even if it does come undone it has a much lower likelihood of falling off. I made this safety pin decoration with some little plastic stars and the non-binary flag colors and I think it's super cute. And I'm putting a big sword pin um, next to my cat patch. Um, I found it at the thrift store a while ago and I love it and I'm just kind of sporadically putting little buttons all over. I did end up changing the position a little bit, but my camera died, so you can't see the final position, like me putting it on, but I will show you and do like a little rundown of how it all looks all together. <clears throat> Hello, sorry, my camera died, but I think it's done and I finished it and sorry I didn't film it because like it took me a while to get the, um, pin positions right and I like ended up kind of switching things around a bunch of times but I'm so so freaking happy with how it all look I'm so so freaking happy with how it looks all put together I'm obsessed with the glow in the dark paint like you can kind of see the glowiness even when it's not like fully fully dark and all the little pins and stuff just added like that extra little touch that I knew it needed. Um, so I'm super, super happy about it. I think it looks really, really cute. Um, I'm excited to wear it. Um, and I think that I'll be like wearing it much more than my green jacket that I stopped wearing um, for a while now. And like my only wish is that maybe I wish that I had bought like a slightly bigger jacket um, so that I could wear like heavy sweaters under it so maybe a modification I'll do eventually is like making it bigger like just putting like a panel in the sides and the arms and stuff so I can fit more um layers underneath it but yeah I'm super super happy with how it looks and um if you at all were inspired and like want to show like I would love to see like if you tag me on Instagram or something in a picture um I, I would love to see what y'all come up with because like I don't know I'm such creative <laughs> talented people that like watch my content and stuff so um if you want to show me something that you've made please feel free to tag me on Instagram I always love to see that kind of thing um but yeah in in other news this is the jacket. Maybe I'll show a couple of clips of like different outfits styled with it or maybe I'll do like a little just verbal explanation of like different DIY ideas that you could do with like jackets that aren't ones that I showed or like maybe just kind of expand on ideas. Hey friends, it's me. It's another day. And as promised, I have come with a list of other ideas that you could use um, when modifying your leather or denim or whatever kind of material jackets. Um, I hope this is helpful to someone uh, because obviously not all the things that I 
did on my jacket would fit for every aesthetic and obviously you can customize things to your aesthetic like if you don't like the designs of patches I did that's fine you can do your own designs of patches of course and if you don't like black and white you can do color like that kind of thing so this is more ideas for people if you are interested um so the obvious ones are obviously like patches pins buttons but like to give you more detail on those um handmade patches you can either embroider them yourself you could make felt patches um you could use colorful paints um if you wanted instead of just like the white and black kind of look that i had um i've heard from people that if you use a fabric medium and mix it into your paint that helps it be a lot more durable on um fabrics so that could be something um, you could also make your patch on a colorful piece of fabric if you wanted to do that instead of just like a plain piece um, Like I've seen lots of really cool patches on like floral fabric and that kind of thing and like stencil patches are also like a great idea I don't Can we not like play music while rabbits trying to film their video, please? My neighbors are a big fan of like uns uns music. Oh yeah, you can um, do your own stencils on patches. I personally am not a big fan of doing stencils because I don't have the patience to like find the picture and trace it and cut it out and make the plastic sheet and like whatever, whatever. But it's a very affordable and easy way to customize your clothing. Or if you don't want to do stencils like that, I didn't even realize this, but this sweater I'm wearing, um, one of my exes actually made it or like customized it but it was just a black sweater and um they laid down a bunch of different like metallic gears and stuff on it and then um bleached it and it looks really cool so if you don't even want to make your own stencils but you can find like cool things around your house like maybe pieces of lace or metallic pieces that you want to stencil that could be really fun you can use fabric paint or bleach um if you're working on like a canvas or a de denim it won't really work on leather obviously um, another thing is you can make patches from cool fabric like vintage napkins or like weird fabric scraps. If you have any quilters in your life or people that like to do textile kind of crafts, um, lots of times they will have fabric scraps, especially quilters I've found have like pre-cut square um, fabric scraps that are really helpful. For instance, in my old um, battle jacket, a lot of these squares were actually from Cage's mom's um, leftover quilting projects and she just had like a lot of extra floral fabric that was already like pre-cut and I used it to just like make some fun floral patches on this guy. Um, so that's an option and yeah vintage napkins lots of times you can find really beautiful like vintage handkerchiefs at like the thrift store or like even crocheted or lace like doilies that are like meant to be pot holders and that kind of thing I found are really wonderful to make um, patches out of. Um, I might have already, oh yeah, you can also buy your patches from small businesses or local um, people if you um, don't want to make them yourself. An artist that I love who makes their own patches is L Lillian Kuda. I'll link um, their stuff below. Another one that I love is, um, I think it's Trash Eddie, like, but it's spelled E-D-Y, so it might be like Trash Edie per chance. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right editing me here. It's obviously pronounced trashity. I don't know why it took me so long to get that, but yes, on to the video. But they have an Etsy and I'll also link it below and I really re love both of those people's works. But also if you make patches or if you know someone who does, of course feel free to link your Etsy and your shops and stuff below because we would love to see it and um, it's super cool. So um, I don't know if I already mentioned, but bleaching your fabric very helpful way to modify your stuff um, but it's only gonna work on like denim and stuff it's not gonna work on like vinyl or leather or those kind of things safety pins I think I mentioned this in my video but safety pins are like a godsend for making things like a little cool a little more like cool and edgy and you can either put them like all over randomly or you could like make um, slits in the fabric and then use the safety pins to put them back together or you could use the safety pins to keep your patches attached to your fabric especially if you don't like sewing um you could also make cool designs in the safety pins like i remember a thing that i <laughs> used to think was like the peak of fashion when i was like 15 was like when people did those like angel wings with like safety pins on the back of their denim jackets i like thought that was the coolest thing ever and it is pretty cool like if you want to do stuff like that you could do it but like i'm sure you could get even more creative and do more designs than just that uh, but yeah safety pins are great um you could also put beads on safety pins like i kind of showed this with my like non-binary flag um safety pin with the stars on it but yeah you can put beads on things and if you're thinking like oh beads are 
like no I don't want to do that they're too like girly or whatever you can find beads with like skulls on them you can find beads with bats on them like you can find like cool looking beads like either at local craft stores or like kind of vintagey places you can also find like weird little buttons that can be fun to put on um jackets and stuff you can find crystal beads or like crystal skull beads if you want to do that like you can find beads that match your aesthetic if you want to do that kind of thing or like you know how people like sometimes make those beautiful beaded art pieces you could do that um in a jacket kind of like on the realm of embroidery um ooh, buttons from bottle caps okay this is one thing that i will show you guys really quickly because it's super easy to do or like i'll show you an example of one that i've made because it's super easy to do and it's super cool one sec so for DIYing your own buttons out of bottle caps, this is one that I made for instance, the one with the B on it. Oh my God, I'm just gonna take it off because um, you can't see it. But this is the jacket. Um, I really like this. It's like a fun corduroy jacket that I found at the thrift store I used to volunteer at. I put on it this B pin that I made out of a bottle cap that had a B on it. So basically, all you have to do is take a bottle cap such as this and then you put it on like a piece of wood or like outside on like a picnic table or something like that and you hammer with a nail two holes in the bottle cap so that then you can poke your safety pin through the two holes and you got yourself a pin DIY uh, so this is something that I used to love to do um, when I was drinking <laughs> um, you know because when you drink sometimes you have like cool bottle caps like those ones that have like the bat on them um, so that's always fun Another thing on the DIYing um, buttons and pins is you can DIY your own buttons out of clay, like polymer clay or air dry clay. That's super fun. You can make lots of like really cute shapes. Like you can make like little cat heads or like hearts or like little tombstones or like whatever your aesthetic is. You can find inspiration to make pins out of that. And then you can buy pin backings at like the dollar store, like these things, you know? And you can stick them on your clay little piece that you've made and you got a pin. Um, you could also, um, lots of times at the dollar store, they sell wooden shapes, like little hearts and little stars and things like that. So you could always um, use that to make like a pin and just like stick this on the back. Um, I know Rookie did a tutorial, Rookie Meg did a tutorial like explaining how to do that. So I'll link it below because it's really fantastic and it makes beautiful, beautiful stuff, especially with like epoxying over it. Another idea that you could do is you could sew fake florals or fake leaves onto your um, jackets and stuff, especially if you're like into that fairy aesthetic I have. I love the fairy aesthetic and I've had my phases of like dipping in and out of it so like definitely floral leaves like a floral punk that would be so cool like a fairy punk yes I love that um on that same note gems and pearls um you can like super glue them onto your jacket if you'd like especially um it was like half pearl stickers that you get at the dollar store I love those and I think they look so beautiful on a lot of the dolls I've done but you could totally put them on a jacket as well on that you can also buy spikes um I, there's a bunch of sites online like studsandspikes.com but you can find a bunch of stud and spike wholesalers um the ones that I have are like tree spikes and they're the ones that you screw in but you can also get iron on spikes that are like the flat ones like you know when um in the like 2010s like every all the emo kids are like wearing those belts with like all the little studs on them you can buy those studs um to iron on and put on your jackets if you want and i've been meaning to buy like some really tall tree spikes um for my jacket but i just didn't get around to it on this one um but yeah studs and spikes are always wonderful to put onto your clothing um lace ribbon trim whether you want to put it around the sleeves around the pockets just like in random little spots that's super fun and i think can look really beautiful wings on the back whether they're made of safety pin or painted on i think it's still really cool especially like demon wings would be so sick on the back of a jacket if you're like good at art and stuff. Designs on lapels or elbows. Yeah, I know that I did my spider web lapels, but you could do whatever you want on the lapels. Same with like the spider web elbows, I think are a really cool tattoo, but I think it would translate really well on a jacket. Um, or you could do elbow patches, like heart shapes, character shapes, whatever you want to do. A themed jacket. Like, yeah, if you did a jacket around like a theme, like I know I've seen some really cool like um, horror movie kind of villain themed jackets that are really really fun or if you wanted to do one around like a season like your like kind of fall themed like you can or a character or an aesthetic or like whatever you want to do i think that um there's no limit to your creativity when you are making your own clothes and doing your own diy things and that goes extra extra hard for battle jackets and that kind of thing so if you want to like try to make it themed around something like i would love to make a vintage halloween themed jacket at some point in my life so you know one one day we will do that but for now this is this is my one that i will use rips and shreds uh this will be very much dependent on the material because if you have like 
a denim jacket, the rips will look probably pretty good, especially if you like shred them with a cheese grate or something. But if you try to rip up a leather jacket, it might be like, I don't know if the look will translate as much. So just be um, aware of that when you are ripping or shredding your um, clothing. Paint splatters, if you have like a fabric jacket or like maybe if it's like a leather jacket, you can use a vinyl paint or like seal it in with like a Mod Podge or something like that. Um, but paint splatters on a jacket if you want to go for a really, really art artsy kind of look or if you did like red and make it look like blood spatter and like a vampire jacket. I don't know. It could be cool. Oh my god, like a Victorian vampire jacket with like lace and blood and like steaks and oh my god and like a garlic like the, oh my god how cool anyway um bows bows would be super fun on the jacket um i know you can also like if you make a bow and then put like a charm in the center of it like a big plastic spider or like a big eyeball or like something like that or like an acorn like whatever you want to do you can make big old bows um if you find that you can't make bows that look nice just look up a couple tutorials after i watched a few tutorials on how to make a nice bows my bows have improved massively especially for, for doll making because i tend to make a lot of like really tiny bows for my dolls um but yeah, bows can make a great um, look on the jacket. To put them on, I would recommend sewing, but if you really don't like sewing, I guess you could glue them on. It just might not be as um, permanent. Embroidery, you can embroider directly onto the jacket, um, whatever you want. Like I have a denim jacket, I'll put a picture if I remember, um, but I put like some kind of hands um, embroidered at the bottom and basically all I did was I found a picture of hands online and I printed it out and I, put it on the jacket and then like sew it around it and then ripped off the paper when I was done sewing and voila, I have hands on my jacket. Broken jewelry is also a great element that you can add to your jackets and weird clothing and stuff like that. Same with chains, locks, keys, whatever. Um, charms, pendants, spools of thread, um, bottle holders or book holders. Like, you know when people like, oh, there's like such a hobbity or like kind of aesthetic of just like forest dwellers when you have like the book that's like leather strapped into your jacket. Like, that's so cool. Like you could totally do something like that. Um, you know, using an old belt to make that strap and like, so you can open and shut it with the buckle. That would be super good. Um, thrift store would be a great place to look for the base material of the jacket and all like the material for your patches and things if you don't already have one. Also, if the jacket's pockets are too small, pocket extensions are very easy to do. Just look up a tutorial online. It's super, super simple. It's basically just cut the pocket open and then add like a piece of fabric to make it longer. Lifesaver if your pockets are very small. And this doesn't have to just be for jackets. You can do this on like sweaters, um, pants, skirts, whatever you wanna do. Um, doll body parts. I freaking love the aesthetic of like a leather jacket or a denim jacket with like Barbie's decapitated head or like some random doll arms or legs on it. Like I think that's super cool. So if you wanna do that, do it. It's like so fun. And on that um, note, you can also get like kind of plastic bats and skeletons and like spiders and things like that that I think are super fun. You can even paint them. Um, I know I got like a couple this year around Halloween that I meant to put on the jacket, but I haven't yet, but I might still, I don't know yet. But for now, I'm like pretty happy with the jacket. It took um, three days in the end, not including the time that I um, like made those patches a little bit beforehand in the summer. But um, yeah, it was a three day project. I'm super, super happy with the result. And um, I might film a little, like a little lookbook of some looks that I could um, wear th with the jacket. But um, yeah, I'm super excited about it. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And maybe I'll also just do like a little detail, detail of it right now. So with the jacket, um, at the top I have like a little troll doll pin that I absolutely love. I got a bunch of these when I found this big, um, like three big plastic bags of troll dolls at the thrift store. They had a bunch of buttons and this little pink haired one lives on my jacket. Um, I also have this cat that's like the AJJ cat and it's like an enamel pin. Um, I put my Social Ghosters Unite. Um, patch it says actually I'm going home and uh bye bye and I think it's from my caddis people but I'll link them below I have my PM press pin and my pin that says ask me about my feminist agenda on the other side I have another um patch from my caddis people and it also says social ghoster but it has a little ghost cat we sell these at my work so I tend to get them with a discount you know um and then I have my life was okay pin and it's got like a little gold skeleton on it and my dad just found it after he threw a party at their house and he was like, oh, do you want this? Like no one claimed it. I was like, great, <laughs> it's mine now. Um, and then I have this little strawberry pin. My boyfriend actually designed this one and I absolutely love it. It's super, super cute. 
And I have this little trans heart pin. I found it at the thrift store a while ago. This one I also found at the thrift store. It's like a wooden pin with a teddy bear sleeping on it. And I put my little non-binary um, safety pin on here. And my Ouija heart. Let's see, Oh, and I have my I heart you pin of this cat that looks a lot like Tuna, except Tuna has yellow eyes. And we've already seen my patches, but um, oh yeah, okay. On my vegan pin, I also put this button that says be nice or buzz off with a little B on it. And I attached this extra chain to my cat pin. I also found this teeny tiny strawberry pin or a strawberry patch that I sewed on. My ramshackle glory patch that I put this little enamel heart on. I have this little like um, mischievous cat that's like climbing up the side next to the pocket with the um, lacy skulls on it. My trans rights patch has a little safety pin hanging off the top of it. I've got my uh, collecting tears for my potion patch that I got a couple years ago at Hot Topic and used to be on a sweater, but I just never wear that sweater anymore, so I changed it out while I was making this project. And on the back, I put this big pin that says, I've invited a few friends over for dinner, and it has a bunch of cats on it, and I think it's super cute. And this is what the back of the jacket looks like. I don't know if I mentioned my no wake for their sake. Um, encounters happen, keep them safe patch, but I love this. It's from Maiden Voyage Clothing, and I love how the jacket glows in the dark, but also kind of in the day. Got all my cryptozoology patches from Maiden Voyage Clothing on this side. I absolutely love them. I took this one off my um, old battle jacket to put on this one. It's got like Sasquatch shaking hands <laughs> with a person with cool tattoos. My Jersey Devil, my Yeti, my Flatwoods Monster. Um, I I think that the Mod Podge did an excellent job of sealing in the acrylic paint and I'm super super happy with the results of it so far. Um, so yeah, that's a more explanatory kind of show at my jacket and everything that I put on it and I really hope you guys enjoyed and now for a little fashion show I suppose. Okay, hello friends, this is the first um, styling video I guess. Uh, so for the first um, outfit, I have a red scrunchie in my hair that I got from the dollar store. It's red with like little white hearts on it and I have like a little spiderweb hair clip as well. Um, for earrings, I have these big old snakes that I got at the thrift store. Behind them, I have these little like kind of red and clear crystals and then um, a big dangly spiderweb. Uh, for my necklaces, I have this like bat, a possum, a tarot card, and a smoky horse crystal. I'm also wearing um, these like little gloves that I got from Spirit Halloween and a bunch of rings on both hands. And I'm wearing, um, whatchamacallit, this red velvet dress that I actually um, kind of modified from a dress that I got from the thrift store. And you can see that video, I'll link it somewhere up here probably. And this is what it, the outfit looks like with the jacket on. Um, so from the top, obviously, like, you can just kind of see the jewelry. And this is like the red skirt. And I've layered up um, two pairs of fishnets. Um, one of them is like very um, wide and the other one is like regular fishnet size. And um, I always love like the kind of one regular um, leg and one like stripey sock or like other kind of pattern sock on the other leg. Uh, so I'm doing that and I'm using like a little heart shaped garter to hold up um, this stocking. And then on the other one, I have just like the spiky ones cause it kind of matches <laughs> matches all like the spikes on my jacket and stuff. And for footwear, I'm just wearing my trusty Demonias. Absolutely love these guys. I got them years ago and they just are absolutely the best. That's outfit number one. It's kind of like a more fun going out kind of look, like maybe to a more fun sort of party. Um, but yeah, all right, next to, now to the next one. Okay, so I really like this next look that I'm uh, showing you guys right now. It's like very much a more like fairy look and I love doing fairy aesthetics, but I honestly feel like a lot less confident in them like in my area because I feel like, I don't know, I get like the weirdest look so I, I tend to wear them in more than I wear them out, but regardless, I'm um, going from head to toe. I have like this purple scrunchie in that I think is super cute. My elf ears that I just got from like one of my local costume stores. Um, these earrings are from Spirit Halloween. I got them this year. They have like moons and hands and daggers in them. 
I'm wearing this choker that I made myself. It has like a little bat charm on it. And uh, this is like this gorgeous Labradorite um, pendant. Um, I'm wearing a ton of rings. And um, for like my top, I'm wearing um, a ripped up pair of fishnets as like my under top. And then over top of that, I'm wearing this like green velvet tank top that I got from the thrift store. I'm wearing like a little charm bracelet with moons and stars on one hand and then on the other one I have these little stars and moons. I made this one recently when I was making my jacket and I love it. Um, another thing I made is this skirt that I'm wearing. It used to be um, like a long black skirt but I never was wearing it very much so I decided to like cut it into smaller pieces. This is what the outfit looks like with the jacket. Feels like very cute and fairy but also kind of punky and stuff which i think is fun or like magical a little bit maybe so yeah this skirt is just like this black and gold fabric that has lots of sparkles and different textures in it and i just like tore it up and shredded it and added lots of like rips in it to give it lots of like fun texture and dimension and underneath the skirt i'm wearing these like purple black stripey socks. I love purple and black stripey socks. They make me feel extra witchy. And for footwear, wouldn't you guess it? It's the Demonias coming back at you. I really like them a lot and I think they make all my outfits super super cute. Sorry dolls. <laughs> Fairy punk should be like a bigger aesthetic. Maybe I'll make a video about that soon because I love it and I used to be way more into it than I am now but I would love to bring it back. <laughs> Okay, hi. I really like this next outfit, even though it's like a little bit um, more pastel than I usually dress. Like, I usually don't wear this much pink and white. Uh, oh, but starting at the top, I've got like a little pink scrunchie in my hair and my pink Ouija earrings. I'm wearing like this really chunky choker that I got from, I think, AliExpress. It's got some pentagrams and some bats on it. I'm wearing um, like a white button down over like a little kind of cropped shirt um, and on the button down I love putting little um, enamel pins on the lapel so this one has like a little cat riding a witch's broom and this one has a little like kind of cat Ouija board um, planchette kind of face so it matches the earrings as well and then of course the planchette earrings match like the little planchette on the um, thing and the kind of like white lacy kind of goes with like the white shirt and like the pink and you know it's like a whole thing and then for the bottom of the outfit um for the kind of bottom of the outfit i'm wearing this pink um kind of pleated skirt that i got from the thrift store and has like a black band running down it underneath that i'm wearing these um kind of leg garter things. Uh, for footwear, I'm wearing my pink creepers that I absolutely love. And I've got these little socks that are kind of like see-through at the top, but they also have like these little bows on them. And I think they're absolutely adorable. And like the studs on the shoes totally match the studs on my jacket. So I think it's like a really cute tie together, but it's like a very cute, like femme look um but with the jacket it just makes it like a little more edgy and stuff which i think is okay hello so this next outfit feels very like early 2000s um emo kind of situation but i've got my big old skeleton earrings um this whatchamacallit gemstone necklace my friend from high school gave this to me and i totally forgot about it for so long but it has like a little moon on the bottom it's so pretty and um i'm wearing these like skeleton gloves that i got at the dollar store this is my boyfriend's old t-shirt and i absolutely love it it makes me so happy it has like a really great picture on it and it just, I don't know, it's fun to wear. And I'm wearing it with like this black and white um, striped shirt from the thrift store underneath. Um, the shirt's from Sin Eater, by the way. And then I'm wearing the pants, my old pants that I made when I was like 16 and um, they still fit and I love them. And they've been like slowly updated over the years, but they would be like very, very matchy matchy with the jacket. I guess you could see like the jacket underneath the shirt. So it's like very like, yellow and vibrant and stuff which is uh I, I didn't know that would happen until i just put it on now so that's great to know and then for footwear i'm wearing my mismatched docks so um my docks that i wear every day and then these um white docks with all these like really really fun designs on them and i love these pants um they feel like a second skin because i just like used to wear them so so much that they're like perfectly molded in to my body and stuff sorry i'm like falling over so this is another outfit um that i would wear out this is much more like casual just like walking around going to the grocery store that kind of situation um but i i love it with the jacket it just like adds an extra little touch to it that i just think is really really special so yeah that's this one <laughs> Okay, so this one feels like very fun and like retro sort of. So I've got like my heart-shaped sunglasses and um, whatchamacallit, I've got um, 
crow or bird skull earrings with like some hearts and crosses. Um, they're from uh, Wish or like Alibaba and so is this um, necklace with like the big um, sword and the circle. I made this necklace out of a chain and lock and um, this is a crow skull. This top is like technically a bathing suit top but I got it at the thrift store and I love wearing the cheetah top as well as the cheetah skirt. I'll show you guys in a sec because it matches with like the cheetah um, on like the neck as well as on my like trans rights patch. <laughs> so this is kind of what the outfit looks like um, all together. Um, the stockings I'm wearing, I got them at the dollar store a couple years ago, but I love them because they have these little like skull and crossbones up the back and they feel very like retro and fun. They also have bows. Um, I'm wearing this belt that I got at like Hot Topic, I think, a couple years ago with this skirt that I got from the thrift store. Stockings, like I said, are from, um, are from the dollar store and I'm wearing my demonias, of course. And so this outfit is just very fun and retro. It feels kind of like a date night outfit to me. Like I would love to wear this out to go like hang out with my babe um, on like a walk or like just going out, you know, to drink some coffee or something like that. I think it'd be so fun. Um, so yeah. All right, so this is another outfit that has much more of a retro feel, but this one's much more in like a little house on the prairie kind of way. Let me, you know, kind of like this situation, um, which I think is really reminiscent of like 90s grunge where like there were lots of like grandma aesthetics mixed in. Oh my God, Venus. Where there were a lot of grandma aesthetics mixed in with like kind of um, grunge, I guess, in general. Um, so this is what it looks like with the jacket on. Yeah, if I can zip it up. Um, so the collar is kind of poking out the top. Um, but for this outfit, I'm wearing my troll doll earrings. These ones kind of remind me of the Hamburglar and they match with like the little guy that I have on my shoulder. I love him so much. And I'm also paired it with my troll doll necklace. This one I made a long time ago from like a little charm that I found at the thrift store. And then this um, glittery pink cat collar that I got at the dollar store. Of course, the jacket, a million rings. And for shoes, I'm wearing my demonias because I think it looks really cute when you have like a big floral dress with like big old punky shoes on. So that's what this outfit looks like. I love this. It literally like feels like a little picnic spread when you get to like spread out. Like it feels like I'm gonna like have like a little a bunch of animals come and, and, and hang out with me. So um yeah, that's that's super fun. That's that, that's this outfit. On to the next. Alright, so this is probably gonna be the last one of the night because I'm feeling kind of sleepy if I'm gonna be honest. Uh head to toe, got my red scrunchie in again. It's like red with white hearts on it, it's kind of silky and I love it. Um oh my gosh, one sec. For my earrings, I have these dangly swords. They kind of look like crosses, but they're actually swords. Um, the choker I'm wearing, I made myself. Um, this shirt has this embroidery that I did myself. It says girls bite back, but girls with like three R's, so it's like grr, you know, like rag girl, not like regular, whatever. <laughs> um, then I have a patch on the back uh, that um, I got from like a local place that um, sells handmade patches. Um, underneath, I'm wearing a fishnet kind of top and I got a couple spiky bracelets on this wrist. Um, I'm wearing a plaid skirt that I DIY'd and it feels like it ties together with like the plaid on here and like the plaid um, choker that I'm wearing and stuff. So I really like this skirt that I added a bunch of patches and stuff to. It has metal bits and bobs. Um, it's just, it was originally a kilt and I added all these um, kind of flaps and patches and um, pockets. Yeah, a lot of these are pockets as you can tell. And um, it's just like a super fun skirt. Um, one of my favorite things on it is this patch. Um, my parents got it for me when they went to Nepal and I think it's super, super beautiful. It has like the Buddha eyes and the um, um, some sort of knife. I, I really love it. Um, I think it's beautiful and the flag, of course. Um, so yeah, this is the plaid skirt. And then for legwear, I have um, one ripped up tight and one stripey tight. And for footwear, I'm wearing my like kind of everyday shoes. They are Doc Martens with pink laces that have cherries on them. I think they're super, super cute. 
And um, yeah, I got the cherries or laces at like a local store and I think they're adorable and like pastel. So, um, so I think that might be the last look that I'm showing for the night. But thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you yourself are having a wonderful day or night or whenever it is you're watching this. And um, yeah, totally tag me in your own DIY clothing stuff because I would love to see it and I think that y'all are like such creative talented people. Um, but yes, thank you for watching and have a good one and take care of yourself and a little bit. So, bye for now. <laughs>